Hello, this is Benedictine on Chessable, and welcome to my video 5 tips for the adult chess improver. So, I just thought I'd, I'd share some of my own experience really in, the, in this video, and I'm trying to try to condense it down into 5 different tips uh, because it's quite a catchy title, really. <laughs> but, uh, but you can you take from it what you want, like just something about myself, really, that I started chess when I was mid 30s. I, well, probably a little bit, probably 33 actually. I stopped playing during the lockdown to work on something else. So I had a course of like eight years where I was studying chess and I went from unrated to 1800 over the board and won a couple of tournaments and, and some good experiences, played several grandmasters and things like that. So it was, it was a good chess journey and I might go back to chess at some point, but I wasted a lot of time and I think I could have done it better and more efficiently. So here are some tips that you might be, <laughs> I might have been of interest to you. Right, so, um, my first thing is to join a chess club. One of the things I didn't do is join a chess club straight away. And the reason for that is I didn't want to walk into the chess club being the weakest player in the club. And, and maybe this is a common thing, I don't know, but that was a mistake in hindsight. And the reason was that I kind of lost a massive wealth of learning opportunities, really. Uh, and you pick up things and aspects of chess you don't, you can't really get from books. You sort of you just pick up things, you look, look at other people's games, you play friendly games, it's supportive, it's a good environment to be around. And not being a part of that for three years where I just sat at home and drilled tactics, it definitely at least cost me a year's progress. Um, and it can save you embarrassment, like the first tournament I did play in, a bit of an embarrassing situation. So it was an under 1700 rated tournament. Rapid tournament, I think it was like 20 minutes on the clock, no increment, never any increment in my games, like virtually ever, uh, which is a pain. But I was playing this game, this this uh, 1700 rated play, and I was obviously unrated. And I got into an end game position, and I was winning, uh, and I thought I was going to resign at any moment, I was going to lose on time. And the game carried on, and it carried on, and it carried on, and it was the last game playing, everybody was looking around. And I thought, well, this is unusual, people crammed around, a bit nervy in that situation, it's the first time I've been in that situation. And then my position did deteriorated and I resigned. I did the honourable thing. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose here. I'll, I'll resign the game. So he says, sorry. So he says, oh, yeah, I'll resign the position. Like, yeah, well done, whatever. Shook his hand. And then he filled in the sheets and walked off. And then the guy next to me tapped me on the shoulder and he says, you do realise that you'd won on time five minutes ago, don't you? And I said, what? And he says, well, you know, his, his flag dropped. What? Where? Where's the flag? Well, there's that red thing there. Oh, oh right. So I've never used a chess clock before. It's like ridiculous. And uh, so you pointed out the flag, which is the little red thing that dropped. I didn't see it drop. I didn't know it was. I know it was a flag because you know, I've obviously watched chess before on TV and things like that. But I'd never actually used the analog clocks, and I, I couldn't tell. And I was too busy, obviously, concentrating on the game. And then he says, "Well, I said to him, well, if 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 I won on time, why didn't he resign?" He says, "Well, no, you have to claim a win. You know, and this is a sort of thing that you you." If I joined the chess club earlier on, you just pick up these sort of things naturally. But, you know, I ended up losing that game, obviously, because I resigned when in a winning position. And But I went on to get four wins from that tournament and finish fourth. Had I actually known how to operate a clock, I would have won the first tournament I went in. But, you know, these you learn from these things. But, uh, but yeah, so being around a chess club, being around other people, you're picking up these things. You don't make silly mistakes. Uh, but more importantly, it, you can get to play over the board games and... Like it, that, you need to do that really. If you're going to get better, you've got to go out there and play, you know, and, and you know, and, and take part. Uh, so, another tip then at the bottom, which I put into this one, it was going to be a separate point, but I, I bunched it in together. Is like lots of people stressing over the ratings, and I did this as well for the first, first few games and maybe the first season, where I don't, I don't want to push the position because I don't want to lose. A draw's okay in this position, blah blah blah. He's a stronger player, and I think doing that is. Uh, is a not a very good idea because you're not exposing yourself to to losses really. You want to go out there, risk it, lose games, learn from them, and move on. Or by stopping the games early, sometimes someone would offer me a draw, and if it were a team event, I'm thinking draw is not a bad result. We're one nil up. I'll take a draw, go to the bar, get a few beers. Uh, it's a good result for the team. But in doing that, I'm sort of in in inhibiting my own learning by by cutting that game short so i think play don't stress over the rating don't stress about winning or losing obviously if the team's going to win you take a draw if, if that's going to be a win but i think people i see this quite a lot people sort of get really uptight and then then the game they're thinking about other things just play 
you know, but go out there, play three, four years, and don't worry about. I mean, it's easy to say, but I think that really is. If you can get in that mindset of of learning, it's useful. Uh, well, five minutes already. Gosh, uh, sorry about that. Right. Anyway, number four, uh, analyze your own games is pretty pretty much of a given. Um, but I would also say, as well as analyzing the game the day after with yourself, with other people, with your opponent, if possible, and then last with with an engine. What I also used to do is collect my own mistakes and start importing them very much later on when Chessable was around. But before that, I would still look at the particular tactics I was losing out on or the particular strategy or whatever it was and thinking like, why am I making this mistake? Is it down to time pressure? Sometimes it's not as useful, but collect your own mistakes is a, is a good idea. And this bottom point about look for overall weaknesses I mentioned in the blunderbuss videos, blunderbusters video, where I collected 30 or 35 games and then I tried to analyze what type of things I was doing wrong. So I won't repeat myself in, in, in this position. If you want to learn more about that, if you just go to that video. Uh, so number three, uh, mm, I didn't want to put openings in. I think openings is a, is a little bit controversial in some ways. My own opinions on openings is they were just an absolute black hole, right? Where you can just potentially waste a, a ton of time studying these things. And that's my opinion. And there's a, the other argument, of course, is that if you've got a good repertoire, you can follow that and you get into positions that you know and you get used to those middle games or those end games. And, and that's another good approach. That's another good strategy. But even for me, who didn't study a lot of openings, I still seem to waste a lot of time on openings. Right? I don't know how that happened. But I'm like, oh, my main thing is tactics, annotated games. But I'm still wasting all this time on openings. I don't know why. It's just like, this is black hole, like I said. This just, just comes in. And one of the issues as well is trying to find the right openings, the, the right sub variations or the right sort of well, repertoire that's a pain um, and sometimes I, I, I for example I'd, I'd study a particular opening for six months and, and hardly ever see it on the board and then and then change openings so all that most of that study is just wasted so even if whatever your opinions on openings are I just just be a little bit wary from, from my point of view and I say this in chess clubs a lot people you know 80% seem to buy opening books and, and they're talking about the openings but then the dropping pieces so you know there is a there's a playoff really for that. Uh, so number two, and this is not controversial at all, going over annotated master games. And I, I agree with Dan Hearsman again, and I think he's a he's somebody who's, who's really useful. And somebody I looked I looked and followed quite a lot in the early days. He has a lot of good material. Uh, and his idea of going over games from good annotated copies is 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 obviously a good good thing to do because they're selected purposely for instruction. And I like his approach of going over games quite quickly. So 30 minutes to 45 minutes, I believe he said, and take something from the game, study another game, move on. You know, you can analyze a game for four hours, but essentially you could pick up six games in that time or more, you know, eight games if you're doing half an hour in a game. So, so that would be my approach and move on. So number one, this is not going to be a shock either. Uh, tactics, right? For the average club player and anybody below 2000 or even below 2100 tactics usually usually uh, ends the game or, or wins the game for you so i prefer again i think if it's in the other video i think i talk about in the common chess patterns video so i'm not going to go over it too much but i prefer much prefer simple patterns over the complex positions now my issue with the standard tactical servers of which i spent many years just just churning over and over and over again is you do pick up a lot of stuff and you know you do get sharp tactically but my issue with it is like let, take for example you start on a regular server my problem is you get say 20 positions you know your rating goes up when you you solve them correctly you, you drop slightly when you get them wrong but then eventually you find your level but then you end up kind of studying positions that i think are too complicated it becomes more of a mini calculation exercise when what you really want to be doing is going over simple patterns and simple positions, absorbing the real common common patterns. And again, you could even go back to Dan Hailsman and he talks about the, the simple Bain book and things like that. So uh, definitely simple over complex. Quantity is going to be required generally if, if you're an adult. Like kids can just seem to pick up this stuff really, really easily and quickly and absorb all the material. But as an adult, you might have to just sit there and sort of churn over thousands of tactics. And, and what you're looking for is to 
to do, have the ability to do that and, and don't kind of think, oh, I've done so many bits, but I'll just keep going, keep drilling. They get better, they get easier, they get you get faster at doing it. Um, the last point on here is like not to collect tactical, th nah, not to ne neglect, sorry, tactical threats. Uh, the problem with, I found, and again, I mentioned it in the other video, is when you are doing tactics, you are studying 99% attacking tactics. And this is an issue because often you can turn up at the chessboard and you're just looking aggressively and you're overlooking opponent moves because you you know you in your head you've just done 10,000 tactics the, the last month and he's <laughs> just too up too much uh, i think you could even afford to study less to get the balance right and, and and at least find some way of looking at how to study threats and and, and defensive tactics that would that would be uh, a definite tip within the, the number one selection of tactics. Right, okay, that was a bit long and rambling and I apologize for that, but hopefully you managed to pick something up from, from this video, or at least I've shared a really embarrassing story, so you can maybe have a good laugh at that, that's no problem. All right, so thank you, thank you very much. Goodbye, good luck with your chess.